What is up guys, Jordan from Holiday Lighting and Creations here and today I'll be showing you how to put mini lights in this oak tree. Let's get into it. To get started, we're going to take a few measurements of the tree to determine how many lights we're going to need. For me, I decided to measure the base and a few bigger branches to determine how many I'll need, and then I kind of guesstimated the rest. But if you need an exact measurement, you can measure all your branches using this method I'm about to give you. So the first thing we're going to do is measure the base or the branch length. So starting at the bottom, you're gonna measure up, and I'm gonna stop about where my tree forks off because it's gonna be different measurements for those branches up there. So my length comes out to four feet, and now we're going to measure the circumference. But when measuring the circumference, don't measure it from the bottom of the branch. Measure it from about the middle because the tree, it's bigger down here and it's smaller up here. So you want to take the average. So my circumference comes out to four feet and nine inches. So now that we have both of these measurements, we can now calculate how many strands we will need. The distance I prefer between each wrap is about three and a half inches and that's equivalent to four of my fingers. So what I do when I go around the tree when I'm wrapping is I just take my hand and go like this so I know it's equal as I'm wrapping around the tree. The first thing we're going to do is determine the number of wraps around the branch we will need. So we're going to take our branch length divided by the gap between the lights. And I prefer a three and a half inch gap between the lights because it gives it the best look at nighttime and three and a half inches comes out to 0.29 of a foot. So in my case, I'm gonna take my branch length of four foot and divide it by 0.29, which gives me 13.79 wraps around the branch I will need. Next, we need to determine the number of feet of lights we will need. So we're gonna take our wraps needed around the branch and multiply it by the branch circumference. So in my case, I'm gonna take 13.79 wraps multiplied by 4.75 feet, which is my circumference, and I get 65.5 feet of lights needed. And now to determine the number of strands that we need, I'm going to take my feet of lights and divide it by feet per strand. And what I mean by feet per strand is the lighted length per strand. So in my case, I'm gonna take 65.5 feet of lights needed divided by 23.3, which is my lighted length per strand, which gives me 2.81 strands needed and I will round up and say I need three strands. Now that we have determined how many strands we will need for this branch or base, you can now continue on to measure more branches in your tree or you can guesstimate just depending on how many strands you used here. For me, I really like this method because it's very close to accurate. I started down here and right where my four foot length measurement on my branch was, I actually used exactly three strands. So your calculations might not be perfect, but they'll be very close. So I would recommend getting maybe a few extra strands just to ensure that you cover the entire tree. So the type of lights we'll be using today are these mini lights and they're five millimeter lights and I'm using a four inch spacing. You can get them into six, but I prefer the four inch because the lights are closer together and they shine better. And I am using a strand of 70 count. So it's easier to use them on the tree and they're not as bulky in your hands. Whenever the end of the strand comes to an end like this and I need to now connect a new strand to it, instead of connecting the new plug just like that, because over time it could come apart and then your whole tree might go out. I like to crisscross my lights. So I take this in and this in and I cross them over and then I bring this plug under and now I connect them together. So now they're kind of tied together and they won't come apart. And plus now your lights are now closer together so you won't see a big blank spot in your tree. Now that we have this side of the tree done, it's time to do this side. But since we have so many mini lights in this tree, we don't want to overload it. So we're going to add a new power source for this side. Because with mini lights, you can only connect about 45 strands, but it might differ depending on what type you're using. And I don't really even want to chance it by getting that close. So we're going to add a new power source with this wire. It's like lamp cord. It's in the description below. And you're going to attach your male end to it and you will plug it in down here where your power is 
and you'll run your wire up to your next branch. And then, for example, mine's here, I've already done this, so I'm going to put one of these female plugs probably about right here. And the good thing about this is you can put these female plugs along the wire anywhere. And we'll continue to run the wire up, so we'll have a female here, since there's a big branch there, here for these two, and then right here for this one. And it'll all come down from down there and we will not blow a fuse. This is all the supplies you'll need to make your extension cord. You will need SPT one wire cut to the right length you'll need, a male plug, and however many female plugs you'll need. In this case, I'm showing you how to use two of them, and some type of cutters to cut your wire. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your wire and you're gonna cut down the middle just a little bit, don't have to be a lot, like that. And now we're gonna find the ribbed side. And you can see right here that this is the rib side because it's not smooth and this side smooth. So when you take your male plug, you're gonna look at the prongs and say, see how this one is bigger and this one's smaller. The ribbed side needs to connect with the tooth that goes to the big prong. So the tooth for that is on the right side and the rib side of my wire is right here. So we're gonna put it in and we're gonna lay it flat and we're gonna close it up. So now, if you plug it in, you'll have power. And if we want to put a female plug in the middle of the plug right here, what we're going to do is take this tab off like this. And now we're going to see, okay, our big hole is right here on the female plug. And we're going to line that up with the rib section. So the rib section is on right here, but the prong for that is on the left side. So we're going to flip our wire over and make sure the ribbed side goes over that prong correctly and then we're going to close it up and lastly we're going to put our end connector on and do not cut this tab off so what we're going to do is look at this say okay here's the big hole and the rib side needs to be on the right because that's where the prong is. So we're gonna put this in, fold it down, and put it on. And just like that, you have your cord. Now that we have this small branch and we wanna put lights all the way to the end, we're going to double the distance of lights, which means I usually use four fingers in between the strands, but since I wanna go back, I'm going to double that and use, I'm gonna go four and then four and then put the next strand. So when we come back, it looks like the same amount of lights we've been doing. So what I'm gonna do, I already started on here, but I'm gonna go around and it's gonna be about double. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then when I get to a stopping point, I wanna stop, for example, this limb right here, I don't want the lights to crisscross because that would be obvious when a guest or customer is looking at it. I'm going to wrap it around and then come back to where they're twisting around the limb the same way and they are not crisscrossing. So when it's like this and complete and lit up at night, you won't even know what we did. It'll just look perfect. Now that we've doubled the distance and came back, it should look like this where all the lights are wrapping in the same way. And I turned the lights around right here and I swung it around a limb so I could come back the same way. If you don't twist it around a limb, you will be end up crisscrossing the lights and we do not want that. We want them all flowing in the same direction. So this is what my power situation at the base of the tree looks like. We have two plugs. This plug is for the light strand that starts at the base of the tree and goes up. And this plug is that wire we ran up into the middle of the tree with extra plugs so we can have more outlets for our lights. So what I'm gonna do, since I only want one plug powering the whole tree, is I'm gonna add another female plug like this on the line right here so we can plug that one into that. And then we can take our power cord and just plug it directly in and it'll light the whole tree. So let's do that now. And so what you're going to do is get your plug and there'll be a tab right here 
and I already broke it off so we can put it on the strand. And you're gonna take this and you're gonna line it up. Make sure it's on the wire the correct way or so it won't work. And you're gonna take your tab and you're gonna slide it over it. Sometimes you need pliers to do it just depending on. And it's that easy. And now you have a plug already in it. So we're gonna take this plug and we're gonna plug it in. So now we have one line and one plug that'll power the entire tree. And you'll just plug it in. And now you have power throughout your whole tree.